good morning everyone thank you for the trainees who have joined in youtube to revise the syllabus and also the topics for the fcs urology part 2 exam today we are going to start infertility anish floor is yours thank you so much and good morning everyone uh, we will go through a couple of scenarios that are very important uh, for the infertility table so to start with you, you you received a gp referral for a couple with infertility uh, there is no semen analysis provided in the along with the referral letter unfortunately so how would you like to proceed i'll see um i'll see this couple in a dedicated fertility clinic i deal with both of them present um and um i'll take a focus history first of all um i'll confirm with the couple that they've had regular um, unprotected sexual intercourse um for at least a year and that they've been unable to conceive um with the female i'll establish her, um her ovulation cycles period um periods with the normal um with the male i'll exclude any ejaculatory or erectile dysfunction um i'll ask um about um whether either of them have been responsible for any previous pregnancies um and um kind of their expectations in terms of the family um i with the male um i will um take a past medical history to establish any uh, potential risk factors for um infertility um such as any previous inguinal scrotal surgery or pathology yeah. um and I'll take a drug history to determine if he's taking any um gonad toxins um I'll also take a recreational hist- uh, social history um to determine um the males um alcohol intake um and also use of any recreational or illicit drugs um and including um anabolic steroid use um I'll then perform a physical examination offering um for the male partner a male chaperone and female chaperone for the female partner um I'll measure the BMI in clinic and um perform a general examination to ensure that he's well androgenized um I will um examine the abdomen um I'll then examine the external genitalia um looking to um assess um for any stenosis of the external meatus um I'll confirm the presence location size and consistency of the testes um I'll examine the epididymis um on both sides to ensure to see if they're full or if there's evidence of epididymal cyst I look for the presence of a varicocele um and I ensure that the vasa are palpable um bilaterally um I will also um perform digital rectal examination to see if there's any evidence of any um central midline cysts and I'll then go on to arrange further investigations and management depending on my clinical findings. Okay, so uh, they have been trying to um, conceive for three years uh, with the unprotected sexual intercourse. Um, there is no other risk factors in the history for both of them. Um, what other investigations do you want from here? Um, so I'll arrange for um, a semen analysis um with um ideally two samples to be produced at least 3 months apart um and also a um, serum hormone profile um to measure the um early morning testosterone um fsh and lh all right um and regarding during the examination um you felt uh, varicocele on the left side for the male partner how do you classify varicocele varicocele is classified according to the hue classification so subclinical varicocele is neither palpable nor visible or visible during our salva but it is present during special tests such as imaging uh, grade 1 is palpable only during our salva uh, grade 2 is palpable um at rest and grade 3 is palpable and visible at rest all right so what 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 are the problems or clinical implications of having a varicocele apart from infertility um a varicocele can also um cause um symptoms in the way of pain and discomfort um it can be responsible for ipsilateral 
um, failure of testicular growth and development, um, um, and it can also um, cause uh, lead to hypogonadism. All right. In the uh, what is the size cutoff criteria to uh, say that a varicose seal is um, clinically significant when you do ultrasound scan? Um, the imaging criteria are that the maximum venous diameter is more than um, three millimeters. All right. And how do you calculate testicular volume? Is there any special formula for that? Um, this is using the Lambert formula, um, which is uh, calculated by multiplying the um, height, weight, and length, which are all measured in um, millimeter, um, centimeters, and multiplying that by the uh, factor of 0 0.71. Okay, well done. And what percent of general population uh, you can see very possible? Um, 15%. And what about men presenting with infertility? Um, so this figure increases to between um, 35 to 40%. And what about men presenting with secondary infertility? Um, so secondary infertility, um, it's between um, I think 30 to 45% of men. Okay. So it can go up to a maximum of 80% according to literature when yeah. someone has got secondary infertility. So yeah. uh, what is the mechanism by which varicocele causes infertility? Um, there are a number of proposed mechanisms. Um, one is thought to be the loss of the uh, counter current and heat, exchange, heat and temperature exchange um, between the um, testicular vein, testicular artery. Um, other mechanisms proposed um, include the production of heat shock proteins, uh, apoptosis, and also possible reflux of um, adrenal and renal metabolites um, through the testicular vein into the testes, um, thus impairing uh, somatogenesis. Okay. So what happens when varicose electomy is done? What are the changes? What are the positive changes of varicose electomy? Um, so with varicocelectomy, um, the heat will be, um, there'll be less heat mm -hmm. in the testes, less heat shock proteins um, present. Um, the testes, if there is um, testicular, if there's a small, if there's been reduction testicular growth, then uh, there's catch-up growth that occurs and mm -hmm. Um, semen parameters improve as well. Okay. Uh, can, can it reverse the sperm DNA damage? Um, if the DNA damage has already occurred, then it does not, not reverse that process. Sorry, uh, what about the uh, after production, after the varicose, varicose after. surgery? Um, I'll, I'm not sure. I'll probably say that it does reverse that process. No. Yeah, exactly. So there are evidence to say that the DNA fragmentation index, DFI, can improve after varicocelectomy, and thereby it can improve the chance of natural conception. And there are papers saying that it can improve the outcome of ART. Yeah. Well done. So uh, how... So this patient hasn't got semen analysis, unfortunately. So how are you going to counsel him for semen analysis? So I explained to him that he needs ideally at least two semen samples, which are at least three months apart, because this mm -hmm. is the period um, over which the spermatozoa cycle is complete. Mm -hmm. um, he needs to um, produce um, a sample via masturbation. Um, and he needs to have at least two to seven days abstinence before he produces the sample. He needs to provide the whole sample into a clean container um, and he needs to transport it to the laboratory immediately, um, no later than an hour. Um, and in transit, he has to uh, keep the sample warm by um, placing it in an inner pocket. Well, so I will read to you uh, a semen analysis report. Okay. So 
his semen analysis report says that the volume is 2.3 mils. The total sperm count is 21 times 10 raised to 6, 10 raised to 6, or 21 million. Sperm concentration is 9 million per ml. Total motility 22% and progressive motility 18%. Morphology is 2%. PH is 7.4 and fructose is 16. Can you analyze this semen sample? And uh, one more thing, in the exam, uh, uh, not always you will get the uh, normal values uh, along with the uh, laboratory values. Okay. So it's, sometimes it's good to uh, see what's the uh, important parameters in the semen, semen analysis. Okay. Um, so in this um, in this semen sample, the volume pH fructose are normal. However, um, he has evidence of oligospermia, as concentration is nine, nine million per mil. Um, he also has a reduced motility um, and reduced normal forms. Um, these findings um, appear to be consistent with the um, OAT syndrome. Okay, so what is OAT syndrome? Um, this is a combination of oligospermia, um, uh, asenospermia, which refers to a uh, reduction in uh, motility, and transospermia, which is a reduction in the um, sense of uh, normal forms. Okay, so what are the causes of OAT syndrome? Um, Causes can be idiopathic. Um, this um, it could be due to, um, for example, Vaxil, uh, gonadotoxins, mm -hmm. um, previous um, testicular or scrotal surgery, um, epididymitis, um, trauma, or torsion. Okay. Uh, what is the evidence that varicocelectomy can improve? Uh, semen parameters and thereby improve the chance of conception? Um, sorry, I do I know, know there it's is a, a, it's a con evidence. Yeah, it's a controversial topic, isn't it? There are, uh, can you tell me, uh, uh, what, what are the guidelines regarding varicocelectomy? Um, the, 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 there's con contrasting um, there's contrasting advice from different guidelines and mm -hmm. the nice guidelines on infertility from 2016 um, do not advise um, brachycelatomy in the management of uh, male factor infertility as it says mm -hmm. same parameters will not be improved um, however the EAU guidelines um, advise that um, brachycelatomy can be offered to um, men with abnormal semen parameters, um, where the capital's got unexplained infertility and where the female's got a good um, chance, um, good ovarian reserve. Um, and also for men with um, clinical varicocele um, or couples where there's clinical varicocele and there's been a high DNA fragmentation rate um, and history of, um, for example, previous um, spontaneous uh, miscarriages. Okay. Uh, what is the latest Cochrane review regarding the varicocelectomy? Uh, um, I think it advises that varicocelectomy should um, and can be offered to um, couples with infertility, with known infertility, where the females got. Um, good um, or reversible cause of fertility or no fertility um, and where um, there is clinical evidence of a varic seal. Yes. So uh, to summarize, the latest Cochrane review was uh, published in April this year. And okay. yes, as you said, uh, the, 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 there's only limited evidence uh, regarding the surgery or radiological treatment for varicocele. It still remains uncertain whether the intervention in the form of either surgery or radiological procedures compared to no treatment may be of benefit on live birth rates. But 
it says that it may improve the chances of pregnancy. Yeah. And also there is, uh, the evidence is also insufficient to say which is better, surgical treatment or radiological treatment. Yeah. Uh, comparing only the surgical options, the microscopic subinguinal surgical treatment probably improves pregnancy rates. And the suggestion is that we have to have high quality uh, RCTs focusing mainly on the live birth rate and also assessing the adverse events. Uh, previously, to us, uh, all the controversy was mainly because of the AVERSE meta-analysis that was in 2003. And later, there's a Cochrane in 2012. And the latest update is in this year, 2021. Okay, so uh, this couple is in front of you. He has got a clinical varicocele, uh, grade two on the left side. How are you going to take his care forward? Um, so I'll, um, in will terms you, of- Will you offer, sorry, will you offer varicocelectomy? Um, the current um, the current NICE guidelines do not um, advise offering uh, varicocelectomy, mm -hmm. um, and I'll explain to him that the um, evidence around this is controversial. Um, that um, the it may not result in improving um, the um, chance of pregnancy whereas there's a risk of complications with surgery. Um, and so, um, therefore, um, I will um, counsel a couple um, about other methods of um, producing uh, fertility. Um, and so the, this would include, um, include um, assisted um, surgical sperm retrieval and techniques um, for this man. Can lifestyle changes improve? Sorry, can lifestyle changes improve OAT syndrome? Um, so, I'll, if if uh, this patient is smoking or alcohol intake or um, is using illicit um, medications, then I will advise him to um, stop those. Um, I'm not aware of any other lifestyle changes that can improve the parameters of this syndrome. All right. Uh, what are the types? Sorry, uh, I'm getting a disturbance. That's why. Um, what are the types of varicocelectomy? Um, there are a number of different approaches. Um, there are radiological procedures, including uh, sclerotherapy and embolization. Um, there's an open scrotal approach, um, subinguinal. Um, laparoscopic varicocelectomy um, and the microsurgical varicocelectomy as well. Okay. Uh, what is the pregnancy rate for microsurgical varicocelectomy? Um, I think this is up to between 25 to 40%, I think. Well done. And uh, do you know the evidence for that one, which compared the different varicocelectomy procedures? Um, there are, the EAU guidelines um, do um, compare the different procedures in terms of um, outcomes and um, complications. I don't know the, if there's a paper comparing all of them. Yeah, so there's a meta-analysis by KN 2009, and that compared the different aspects, I mean, different types of um, varicocelectomy interventions and in that one, as you said, the microsurgical has got the highest pregnancy rate of nearing almost to 42% with minimal complications. Uh, yeah. So uh, if, if you are counseling a patient for microsurgical varicocelectomy, how will you, how will be your approach? Um, so I'll um, consent them using a BAUS consent form and information leaflets. Um, I'll inform them of the um, this approach to the procedure, that it's a microsurgical procedure um, involving an incision in the inguinal region um, in order to uh, remove the brachial, um and um, the, 
Uh, expects to be performed today procedure. Um, I'll explain the benefits in order to improve semen parameters and improve the chance of fertility. Um, and I'll outline the potential um, psych uh, complications um, with general complications of any surgery, including uh, bleeding, in this case, scrotal hematoma, infection, pain, and anesthetic risk. Um, and I'll also mention specific complications to them, uh, which would include uh, hydrocele formation, although the chance of this is less than 0.5%, um, mm -hmm. chronic scrotal pain, uh, inguinal scrotal pain, um, and that this procedure may not um, improve semen parameters or um, produce a pregnancy at all. Okay. Thank you. So we'll go to a different scenario now. If there is another GP refer letter for, with a, for a couple where the semen analysis shows azospermia in two samples. They've been trying to conceive with unprotected intercourse for three years. And there is no previous history of any ingoing of scrotal surgeries. Uh, the examination is normal. Uh, both vases are, are palpable and the blood tests are normal. And the semen analysis shows volume 0.5 ml, no sperm identified, pH is 6.2 and fructose is 7. Okay. So what, what, what are your thoughts on that semen analysis? Um, this demonstrates a low volume acidic um, semen sample, low fructose. Um, I think this is um, suggestive of an obstructive azeospermia, but where there is an obstruction distal to the ejaculatory duct. Um, and this is because um, the seminal vesicles account for the majority of seminal fluid uh, contributing 70% and this is fructose rich, uh, whereas the volume here is uh, small and fructose deficient um, and it's acidic as well, um, which so it's likely the, the majority of this sample is prostatic fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, are, are there any imaging that you can do to see if it is a distal obstruction? Um, imaging that can be performed um, include an MRI scan of the pelvis um, to assess for presence of ejaculatory duct cysts um, and extended terminal vesicles. Um, Transrectal ultrasound uh, can also be performed to determine if there is any uh, significant dilatation of the seminal vesicles and uh, um, ejaculatory ducts. Um, but in the first instance, I'll arrange for um, uh, MRI scan of the pelvis. Okay. So in MRI scan of the pelvis, what's the size criteria to say that um, the seminal vesicles are distended or dilated? Um, this will be a anterior posterior diameter of the seminal vesicles of more than 15 millimeters. All right. Uh, so this patient's trust volume shows that, sorry, trust uh, imaging shows that there is a one centimeter midline cyst and there is dilated seminal vesicles bilaterally. Uh, he, so how are you going to uh, proceed from now? Um, so I informed the patient that um, the cause for his um, semen analysis findings has been identified um, and that, um, can I just also confirm that he's, he's had a hormone profile measured? Yeah, all hormone yeah. profiles measured. Everything else is normal. Okay. The um, only finding is this uh, semen, abnormal semen analysis. So I'll explain to him, the, um, I'll counsel him about further management options um, in the form of surgery um, to try and in, to improve his chances of conceiving. Um, and these will either be through surgery on the um, cyst itself um, or um, on um, surgical sperm retrieval techniques. Mm -hmm. um, I will counter him on a transurethral um, resection of the ejaculatory ducts with the aim um, of uh, using a vast consent of all information leaflets. Um, and I'll explain what the procedure involves to him, that it's a transurethral procedure under a general anaesthetic, which involves uh, either resection, deroofing or aspiration of the cyst um, to allow sperm to be um, conveyed through the ejaculatory duct. Um, I'll outline the risks of the procedure to him 
um, mentioning specific risks such as um, urethral stricture formation, hematospermia, um, incontinence, um, reflux of urine causing um, pain and fibrosis and stones, um, and also um, procedure may fail. Um, I will also offer him um, surgical sperm retrieval techniques, um, and these have been in the form um, of um, either um, TZ um, or TZA. Okay. Uh, so, are there any parameters that you look for when you decide between the current versus assisted re reproductive techniques? Um, so, um, in terms of performing a TURED, um, I'll look to see whether um, there are any um, external uh, um, any abnormalities with the external meatus, um, assess the um, age of both the female and male partner and the chances of um, fertility in the future. Um, I'll, it depends on the patient preference as well. Um, and and so it's the yeah. size of the testes. Um, Excel, and, it's a, yeah, that's right. And one more, more, most important thing is because of the time and the cost involved with ARTs, yeah. if the couple wishes to have more than one child, then uh, that prefers, uh, that decision favors the reconstructive approach. Yeah. So you can say that if the yeah, partner is young and if the couple wishes to have more than one child, it favors reconstructive approach. Yeah. So uh, how, 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 how are we doing? I mean, uh, uh, can you explain to me how we do TURED? Um, I'll ensure the patient is appropriately prepped, contented, and anesthetized with who checklist form um, and antibiotic prophylaxis administered as per um, local um, trust guidelines. Um, this procedure involves a trust performed at the same time um, in order to identify the seminal vesicles and um, inject methylene blue to um, inject methylene blue. Um, I'll then insert a size, uh, I'm sure the area is perhaps draped, I'll insert a size uh, 26 French uh, receptoscope uh, transurethrally. Um, I'll first um, enter the bladder to ensure there are no abnormalities there, um, and then I'll withdraw to the Vera Montanum. Um, and observe for the presence of methylene blue to identify the opening of the uh, duct. Um, I'll then use um, either I'll then use a either a uh, resecting loop in monopolar um, with monopolar diethermine glycine um, to either resect the veru, um, or I can use a Collings knife to um, deroof the the top and make incision in the top of it um, and. I'll then observe to see if um, there is any um, kind of release of sperm from the um, opening. Um, at the end of the procedure, um, I will um, place a uh, size 16 uh, urethral catheter, keep the patient in overnight, and ensure they have the appropriate postoperative instructions documented. Okay. Be before injecting the methylene blue, or indigo carmine, will you aspirate and see if there is any sperm in the seminal vesicle? Um, yes, I would. Yeah, and uh, the standard procedure is uh, once you aspirate it, if there is sperm, you can uh, also use it for the cryopreservation. If in case, if the two is a failure, we can use that sperm for the yeah. ART techniques. Uh, and if there is no sperm in the similar cycle, that means that there is much more proximal obstruction. And yeah. approximately 20% will have secondary epididymal obstruction. Yeah. And if the sender has the facility and also if the surgeon has the expertise, it's always better to take the consent for other procedures like epididymal vasostomy, vasovasostomy, uh, if we find if there is any proximal obstruction. Okay, so would there be an uh, embryologist present at the same time, ideally? Exactly, ideally, yeah. So surgeon, radiologist, and embryologist is the ideal setup. And, yeah. the, and the surgeon, as well as the uh, 
sender has should have the facility to go ahead with a proximal obstruction really uh, in the form of epidema vasostomy or vasovasostomy vasos, vasos, vasos and that should be reflected in the consent form yeah what is the success rate or sorry what is the pregnancy rate after turage um this is between 25 to 40% okay well done and you have already uh, mentioned about the complications uh, so we were discussing that uh, if uh there is a uh, sorry uh, let's go straight into it what are the sperm retrieval techniques that you are aware of um so i'm aware of um those relating to the epididymis so percutaneous um epididymal sperm aspiration mm -hmm. uh and microscopic epididymal um sperm aspiration um and also those really uh, performed on the testes so these would be uh TESA, so testicular sperm uh, extraction, um, TZ, sorry, testicular sperm aspiration is TESA, uh, TZ is testicular sperm extraction, um, and micro TZ is microscopic uh, testicular sperm extraction. Okay, well done. And if conventional TC is a failure, what is the salvage rate when you do micro dissection TC? Um, salvage rates is some um, slightly higher for micro TZ um, and is uh, between 50 to 70 percent. Okay. And regarding the artificial reproductive techniques, can you tell me a couple of, I mean, uh, some of the artificial reproductive techniques that you're aware of? Um, so the, there is in feature fertilization, uh, which involves um, the um, fertilization between uh, spermatozoon and oocyte in a petri dish um, and this is then implanted into the female um, and this is more um, useful for sperm which are fully motile. Um, there is ICSI, um, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, uh, which involves the injection of the spermatozoon directly through the zona pellucida and um, into um, an oocyte and um, this is more useful for sperm which have reduced motility um, and then there's also intrauterine um, insemination um, where I think sperm are direct, um, injected directly into the uterus um, with the aim of um, then fertilizing station then taking place um, in utero. Okay, well done. So those are the standard uh, techniques that are described and supported by the NICE guidelines as well. So we shall go through the which is different scenario now. You are getting a referral letter for a, mm -hmm. from the GP for a 34-year-old gentleman requesting for a vasectomy. So how are you going to uh, proceed in this in this case? Um, so I'll start off by taking a focus history and then performing a physical examination. Um, in the history, I'll establish with the patient that um, he has completed his family, if he's been responsible for any previous pregnancies, um, and um, that he's aware that this would be um, a permanent form of contraception. I'll explore if he's used any alternative forms of contraception um, and um, any factors in his partner, um, whether she's used contraception, um, I will take a past medical history to assess for any previous uh, inguinoscotal um, surgery, um, and uh, I'll then go on to um, perform a physical examination, um, offering a male chaperone. Um, I'll measure the BMI in the clinic. Um, I'll examine the um, inguinoscotal region to look for any evidence of previous surgical scars, um, I'll assess both testes um, and I will um, look for the presence um, of the vas bilaterally to ensure that they're easily palpable um, and noting as well um, the amount of um, surrounding tissue. Um, and then depending on my clinical findings, I'll then go on and counsel the patient. Okay. So uh, oh, the patient, uh, there are no other risk factors. He has completed his family. He has got uh, thin, I mean, there's not much of fat pad in the groin and the inguinal region. The vas on both sides are easily palpable. He agrees to undergo local anesthetic uh, vasectomy. 
so uh, regarding the surg- possible surgical complications and long term effects what will be your advice um so um i'll counsel him on the issues about some um, consent form and information leaflets and mm-hmm. i'll inform him about the um general complications of any procedure such as mm-hmm. bleeding infection sepsis um and the cancer reaction in terms of specific complications i will counsel him about the risk of scrotal uh, bruising and hematoma and abscess which may need a uh, further surgical drainage um that there is a 5% risk of chronic um or cancer which can potentially be debilitating um a 1 in 200 risk um of an early failure rate needing a uh, repeat surgery and a late failure rate of 1 in 2000 which occurs um by a recanalization of the vasa um despite there being an initial uh, negative semen analysis um So that's what I'll counsel him about the potential complications. Okay. What are the types of vasectomy? Different surgical um, methods. So, um there's a conventional vasectomy and there's a non-scalpel vasectomy. Okay. And how do you do a conventional vasectomy? Um with a conventional vasectomy, um the vas um is isolated using a three finger technique um uh, long tube incision is made um over the vas um and the vas is then brought to um the uh delivered uh, dissection is made through the layer layers uh, vas is delivered to the surface and um, through the wound um and uh, portions uh, excised and the cut ends tied okay uh will you use any other methods to uh decrease the rate of failure so in order to reduce the rate of failure um i will as i mentioned excise the segment of vas mm-hmm. um leaving only leaving the cuttons um i will um apply um mucosal cautery to the cuttons mm-hmm. um i will um ensure fascial interposition of the cuttons of the vas um and they also apply a uh, clip um to the uh, testicular um end of the vas all right so your patient uh, was uh, he, he, it went well surgery went well uh, so how are you going to counsel him regarding the post vasectomy follow up um so i'll advise him that um him and his partner still need to use a uh, regular intercourse uh, and basically still need to use um contraceptive you know, every time uh, they have sexual intercourse uh, he needs to ejaculate a minimum of 20 to 30 times in order to clear any residual sperm which uh, sperm which within the more um distal um vas um and within seminal vesicles um i will inform him that he needs to find the first um semen analysis sample um, at least 12 weeks following surgery um and following the same um, advice as before in terms of the requirements for semen analysis um i will inform him that um if the first sample shows that he is uh, asymptomatic uh, then he can um resume uh sexual intercourse without the use of contraception uh what is special clearance um so special clearance um is when um at 6 months there are fewer than 100,000 non-motile sperm per mill um within the semen analysis um it is for this level that um the special clearance can be given to is uh, not use contraception more as a sort of rate of pregnancy with this particular concentration parameters is very low all right and we can also say that there is a bowel information leaflet on post vasectomy semen analysis so it is a good yeah. practice to give the bowel leaflet uh, once the patient is in the recovery or once the patient is yeah. before the patient gets discharged um all went well and your practice is going well down the line 10 years later uh, you are seeing the same patient a lot of things happened in his life so he is requesting for a vasectomy reversal so how are you going to counsel regarding vasectomy reversal um so i think by this point he's now 44 years of age um i was told the reason 
why he wants a reversal? Does he have a new partner? Um, I'll establish if now both of them have been responsible for any pregnancies and if he himself has had any um, for conceived further since his vasectomy. Um, I will um, determine if he's had any further um, inguinoscrotal surgery um, and whether um, he's taking any, whether there are any further risk factors for reduced fertility, um, particularly from the female side and his new partner. Um, and then when I perform the physical examination, I'll again notice uh, offer a male chaperone, notice BMI. Um, I will um, examine the um, inguinoscrotal regions for the previous surgical scars um, and seeing whether uh, confirming, again, the size of the testes um, and presence consistency and also uh, palpable defects that are present um, within the vas uh, bilaterally. All right. Uh, so there are no other risk factors. He has got a new partner. Uh, she's 33-year-old. And they they wish to have more than one ch one child. Uh, so, what is the success rate of vasectomy? Sorry, vasectomy reversal. Um, success rates can be determined either via patency rates, but also uh, overall pregnancy rates. Mm -hmm. um, so, the patency rates um, at one five. 10 and 15 years are uh, 97, 88, 79, and 71 percent respectively. But in terms of pregnancy rates, uh, these figures are uh, 76, 56, 44, and 30 percent respectively. Where does that figures come from? Do you know the evidence behind that? Um, I think there was a paper in I think 2008, but I can't remember the author. Yeah. So. Uh, the Bowes information leaflet uh, gives that uh, vasectomy reversal success rate based on the Bell Curry paper in 1991. Yeah. Um, so, well done. Uh, can he have the vasectomy reversal with NHS? Um, no. So, this would uh, again have to be performed in the private sector. Okay. And can you tell me one of the methods by which vasectomy can be done? Um, so it's done using a microsurgical approach, um, be performed by um, making a, um, a screw, uh, incision over the mass in the midline raffi, um, and um, the Sorry, aim is uh, to... Uh, I'll, ask, I'll change the question. What are the main surgical principles that you make sure that, that, that you do to make sure that the procedure will be a success, the main surgical um, principles? So um, the principles would be to um, in, see if there is, um, take some, take uh, vast washings and see if there is uh, evidence of sperm within the um, fluid. Mm -hmm. um, and so ideally an embryologist needs to be present at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The um, principles are to ensure um, exact approximation of the cut ends to reduce the incidence of leak and sperm granuloma, um, but also to ensure that they are, um, the cut ends are tension free. Um, so, um, regarding the procedure, uh, yeah, you, you said it right, microsurgical, but regarding that, uh, specifically for the vasectomy reversal, uh, I would suggest to, uh, I would modify that answer to say like it, is, it should be a microsurgical multi-layer yeah. micro dot method yeah so there are usually we do it's like a, we put six dots on either end of the vase and then accurate mucosa to mucosa approximation is done with the double headed needles and the anastomosis yeah. should be leak proof and other other principles like should be tension free there should be good blood supply at the cut end of the vase and the mucosa and the muscularis should look healthy and yeah. Yeah, and a good good technique. Um, what is the indication to go ahead with the vasoepididymostomy instead of vasovasostomy? Um, I think this would be if there is um, if there's no sperm found within the um, fast washings because it's just 
bit more instruction. Um, therefore, um, therefore, we indicated to form an epidemic vasostomy so that um, sperm from the epidermis can travel more um, readily into the valves. All right. So, and also if there is the uh, secretion from the epidermal end is very sticky or toothpaste like. And also, we had to think about vessel epididymostomy. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of the techniques, of the different techniques of vessel epididymostomy? Um, in microsurgical technique. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, so, no, it's mainly it's three. Specific. Yeah, it's mainly three types end to susception method, there's an end to site method, and end to end method. Okay. Um, so we are coming to the end of the discussion now. It's almost one hour, isn't it? Yeah, well done. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is really good. Uh, no concerns at all. Uh, you got the uh, numbers and percentages. The studies really well there. Uh, good knowledge. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, I, I, I'll see what Mr. Janshagarin has to uh, tell about the feedback. Well done, Priyush, and um, I think it's a very nice revision after having the extensive session with uh, Ms. Ayo Kelly J yesterday. Um, these are all very straightforward scenarios, and um, sometimes you may not even come across any infertility-related scenarios, but when it comes, it's very straightforward, even compared to any of the complete clinical urology scenarios, because things are very well laid down. There are multiple opportunities for you to bring in some values and percentages. Those values and percentage will really improve your score. And of course, there are few articles to quote here and there which will further improve the score. Uh, I think if any infertility related scenarios comes in the exam, you guys should feel quite confident and uh, comfortable. Yeah. Good. Uh, you have any questions, Pish? Um, so, in terms of the um, guidelines regarding paracetamine in fertile men, um, I think the the only nice guidelines I could find were relating to what I said specifically were those infertility guidelines from 2016. Um, it seems it, they seem to be a bit conflicting because the um, the primary care nice guidelines um, in terms of primary care for paracetamol actually um, advise referral to urology if there's a grade two and above axial and abnormal semen parameters mm -hmm. um, but it then doesn't mention further in secondary care what urologists need to do so i'm presuming that those fertility guidelines are the most up-to-date with regards to nice and um, recommending varicocele um, or not re recommending varicocelectomy with infertility Yes, exactly. So when you say that, um, I mean, the primary referral criteria for the NICE, uh, yeah. when you start, uh, it definitely says that you can refer for the possible surgery. And when you go down in that, uh, in, in, in that discussion, you can see that uh, for, from the urologist perspective, perspective, it is saying that we should not offer it. So it's, it's a bit yeah. controversial. Uh, what uh, I know, I mean, uh, the experts in the field, um, like uh, we had some discussions during our pre preparation and for the exam purpose stick with the nice guidelines but say that uh, it is quite different now probably the nice guidelines might need to get updated um, yeah. but uh, I, I don't think that that's why i just left it there without causing much controversy because in the exam there is only 10 minutes and yeah. the, the most of the time hopefully in the for the examiner's answer sheet, it will be given. Like if the if the candidate says that uh, it cannot be offered, that is still acceptable because with the, with the nice guidelines. So what you did today is acceptable. So saying that we cannot offer it because it's not uh, done by the nice, but we are aware that these are the newer evidences, and there is the newest evidence with the, even the because Cochrane review is one of the most respected reviews, isn't it? So yeah. uh, it, it, it is saying that there is possibility that it might increase the pregnancy rate, but still we don't know what occurred the live birth rates. So it's more like a discussion rather than saying that, yeah, this is the uh, procedure that I'm going to do. Uh, the, the way you handled it today was really good. You can make it like a story, Piyush. You can say that as per the NICE guidelines 2017, men should not be offered surgery for varicoceles 
and then you can say that but uh, there are some evolving evidences with uh, EAU 2021 supporting the varicocele surgery and the latest 23rd of April 2021 Cochrane review further gives uh, good evidence uh, to support and also there is uh, insufficient evidence to support between surgical and radiological treatment. I think finally you can finish off with Cochrane and uh, mention that uh, I think it's a time for the NICE to revise its guidelines and that will be a very nice answer. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any and other... what we have not... Yeah, sorry. No, any other questions for Piyush? You can continue, Anish. Yeah. So what I have not discussed here is possibly, uh, really, I mean, it is always better to prepare with uh, an, ejac an, ejac sorry, an ejaculation and the retrograde ejaculation as well. Because yeah. very rarely uh, there is a chance that there, there could be questions on retrograde ejaculation. Uh, EA guidelines has got good uh, detailed uh, things on how it is diagnosed and how, what, what are the treatment options, the medical treatment options. Yeah. So uh, I, I hope at some point we will have a short discussion on the um, ejaculatory disorders so that we can discuss the PE and ejaculation and retrograde ejaculation. So that will yeah. cover, I think, everything of the infertility. So you are well, then you are completely prepared. Whatever questions comes to you, you on the way, you can easily handle that. Okay. Any other questions, yeah. Pooj? Um, no, no other questions from my side. Uh, thank you both again. Okay, very good. Have a nice uh, Sunday break and uh, you are heading towards very busy BAUS week. As I said, uh, we both are available if you guys have wish to have any sessions. Otherwise, we can start maybe from Saturday or Sunday after BAUS and let's see how it goes on. Okay? Okay. Good. Have Thank a good, you. Have a good rest of the weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.